Cult is India's first fitness unicorn that made 700 crores in revenue last year. But in a super crowded Indian fitness industry, how they got her is super interesting. And this unknown strategy behind their success is acquisition. In today's video, we'll look at this entire strategy to acquire companies end to end. Starting with the two founders acquiring Cult itself in 2016. Before we get into the founders acquiring Cult, here's why their acquisition strategy is important to understand in the first place. See, in 2015, the Indian fitness industry was cluttered with more than 120 fitness startups. And while other companies could get to a point where, sure, they were making 10, 20 crores in revenue, no fitness company could ever make it big till Cult Fit showed up. See, with more than 1 lakh active consumers on their digital product and a sales growth of 300% in the last year, Cult Fit is by far the largest fitness chain India has ever seen. And they're probably the only brand that made fitness cool in India. Plus, we all know the people who subtly flex that they have a Cult membership. That is very hard to build. Also, the scale that they have achieved is pretty insane. They're present in 32 cities with their cult branded centers, but also have access to almost twice the number of cities to so their marketplace and franchisee model. And this is exactly why it's important to understand this super secret strategy that they have deployed. And of course, there are many other reasons for cult success, be it community building, branding, great product market fit. But in this video, we'll stick to the most underrated strategy, the brilliant acquisition strategy. Let's start by understanding the first and one of the most important acquisitions where the whole story began. See, if you just Google and search for the founders of Cult, you'll see that Mukesh Bansal, the ex-Mintra CEO, and Ankit Nagori founded the company in 2016. But the start is more interesting than this. See, in 2015, Cult, my new Cult, not Cult Fit, was started in Bangalore by two guys, Deepak Poduvan and Rishabh Tilang. They were visionaries who were optimistic about the growing health consciousness in India. And Deepak was an engineer with an MBA degree who was super bullish on starting something of his own and wanted to get out of his marketing role at Wipro. Like, who would want to do that? While Rishabh, who also had an MBA, was super deep into fitness. In fact, that guy is an L1 trainer who even trains with international athletes and did at that time. So this duo decides, hey, let's start cult. And their idea was interesting to promote machine-free fitness. In fact, when they started, they didn't even have one single treadmill in their gym, and that was intentional. They were training through rings, jump ropes, boxing bags, resistance bands, and all the unconventional jazz. And they started with only nine trainers and had 200 customers, just by word of mouth. And that too, in only six months. The target market was a tier one Bangalore crowd who would be open to getting educated on fitness. And they had a super early product market fit since no one before this had ever focused so much on awareness and education along with fitness. I'm talking about the time when most of the market share here was with the chains like Talwalkars and Anytime Fitness and the Gold's Gym. In fact, the Gold's Gym was the most popular chain and even won the award for the best gym of the year in 2015. But even the Gold's Gym would later get acquired by Cult in 2021. But we'll come to that later in the video. In 2015, Mukesh Bansal, the founder of one of the biggest e-commerce platforms in India, Mintra, had already sold his company to Flipkart and started to work as the e-com platform head there. He, along with Ankit Nagori, who was the chief business officer of Flipkart at the time, they started to find a gap in the market. These two were fitness buffs and they understood that there was a rising intersection between increased pec savviness and increased health awareness. Now their idea here was to launch a platform for preventive healthcare. And they decided to launch CureFit. And now this is where the very first acquisition happens. CureFit acquires Cult for 20 crores, which was about $3 million at the time, for a majority stake. See, Mukesh was already a user of the original Cult gym and was tracking this fitness space very closely. In fact, he had invested some of his own money a few months before the majority acquisition happened with CureFit. Now with this acquisition, two things came together for CureFit. First, the phenomenal tech team and the founder's vision of CureFit by default. And second, the on-ground proven operational competence of Cult. See, Cult still operated as a separate brand under CureFit until 2021, when the entire company was rebranded as Cult Fitness. Cult as a brand name became so big that they had to rebrand CureFit as Cult. But think about it. Why even acquire Cult in the first place? Now, before we get into that, what's super interesting for us while shooting this video here 
is that a growth ex capstone team literally built a growth strategy for cult that was so realistic that they were flown down to Bangalore to meet the cult leadership team here to present their strategy, which ultimately influenced cult's business roadmap. This strategy runs literally into hundreds of pages and is super in depth. But because we love you, we want to give away a small portion of this exclusive document to our YouTube fan. In this, you'll find insights about Cult's users, in-depth market research that the team had done, and the industry insight behind Cult's massive growth. The link to access the document is in the comments, and it's free by the way, so happy learning. Now cool, back to the bigger picture and the bigger strategy that the Cult founders were deploying. And this was their horizontal acquisition strategy. See, Cult had a solid vision that they wanted to grow in four major areas. First, physical fitness, which ultimately became cult fit. The D2C segment, which became cult sport. The third was a preventive and mental health space, which they wanted to enter, which ultimately became care fit and mind fit. And they also understood that healthy food had to become a big part of the pie, which was formed as eat fit. And then of course was spun off into a different company. Now to do this, the founders started following a horizontal acquisition strategy super aggressively. See, there are two types of acquisition strategies. One is horizontal and the other is vertical. A vertical acquisition is when the acquisition is done to get a supply chain or production advantage by acquiring a company in a different production stage. So to give you an example, acquiring a supplier or any vendor that the company might be already doing business. Think of Tesla. Tesla is one of the biggest global examples of the vertical integration as they manufacture even the motor component of their car in-house. Now, horizontal acquisitions are acquisitions where the company acquires another company in the same industry or a same production stage. A classic example of this is Disney. Think about when they acquired Hotstar or 21st Century Fox and Pixar over the years and used these integrations a lot. Cult for a horizontal acquisition strategy. And they were initially after companies that had some physical centers and proven operational excellence or companies that could help them solve their customer problems in a better way than they were doing already. Cool, that's a lot. But now with a solid vision and strategic deployment of capital, Cult went on a literal acquisition spree. Now look at the four verticals we spoke about, right? Cult acquired companies on each one of these service lines and ended up acquiring more than 20 companies to date. I mean, in 2021 alone, they ended up acquiring like seven startups. That is aggressive. But here's where things start to get even more interesting. There are three key reasons behind this massive acquisition spin. And we'll get it in them one by one. First of all, it's a mistake to look at cult like a fitness chain. See, Mukesh and Ankit understood this super early. The mistake early fitness chains were making is that they were tackling health in just the physical aspect with gym chains. But see, the only way to build true impact in this sector they should look at it holistically. They did not aim to target only physical fitness. They also wanted to solve mental well-being, the diet space, the D2C space, and the preventive checkup space. So they understood that the gold is not in becoming a fitness chain. The gold is in becoming a fitness platform where the best fitness solutions are available. Now with this lens, let's get into the three things like I said. First, starting with greater distribution. Now in one interview, Vivek said that cult customers should be able to walk to their gyms. A cult center should be a maximum of 20 minutes away. Now to achieve this, they of course wanted a distribution network at a massive scale. And they used three ways to achieve this massive distribution. First, of course, they built centers which they own 100%. Second, they used a marketplace model in which pre-existing gyms come onto the platform and are co-branded as cult centers. Cult drives Jamal for them through this and takes a commission off each. And third, they use a franchisee model. This model is very similar to how you see big QSR brands do it like McDonald's, Subway, in India, Wow Momo and things like that. To this date, only 35% of all centers are owned by Cult itself. Rest are either a part of a franchisee or their marketplace model. This acquisition strategy gave Cult much greater access to newer markets and way more customers. And remember, like I said about Talwar Kers and Kohl's gyms, this was the main mistake that they were making. They were building their own gyms, which had a super high capex and even a slower expansion time. Many chains that they acquired, like Thousand Yoga, were rebranded into cult centers. 
but this was not something they wanted to do for every acquisition see for example cold gym tried fitness fraternity and fitness first they were some of the biggest indian gym chains that were there in the country for example cold gym even had a great tier 2 and tier 3 presence with more than 140 centers in more than 90 cities so when cult acquired the gold gym franchise rights in india they didn't want to rebrand it and why it's simple because brands like gold gym had such massive recall that there was no business reason to convert these gyms into cult studios so what curefit did was to operate them as a separate brand itself and just smartly got access to a way bigger pool of customers right acquiring these popular fitness chains did three things for cult first it avoided the chance of future competition as they could have taken advantage of their existing distribution and added cult like tech to their studios second they got access to the tier 2 and 3 markets which they had not entered so far and third it got many other gyms under its marketplace model with this they scaled their cult pass offering through all the newly acquired offline gyms so think about it once a person buys a specific cult pass they would get access to multiple pro and elite gyms in their cities now with this excessive offline footprint they right now have the highest offline number of centers in the country with 160 cult fit centers 140 gold gym centers and more than 40 fitness centers and i'm sure they're coming up with way more now by the way this fitness vertical contributes to 65% of cult's total debt now coming to the second point that these acquisitions gave them increased product offerings see cult's aim is to build the largest fitness community in the world now for that they needed the best product offerings and that's why their acquisitions like urban terrain shed rpm fitness and one fit plus were crucial because these companies were fitness equipment companies and acquisition was the quickest way for cult fit to increase squs for their users to buy but most importantly they wanted to have squs at different price points see at the time of this acquisition their bikes ranged from simple air bikes for 5000 to 7000 rupees to premium cult fit bikes that were for 50000 rupees that literally gives customers an excessive number of options i mean think about it the reason you go to an amazon or some other favorite d2c website of yours is the personalization and options for you they wanted their users to not go anywhere except their platform even for their food vertical they bought the biggest confectionery chains like cake zone brands like paratha box ammi's biryani masala box and etc and of course they replicate the same for preventive and the mental health care space by acquiring serenity and sugar fit this strategy saved time in customer acquisition and most importantly product research and development i mean just think about how much effort it takes to make one brand successful and to earn a customer's trust if cult had done it organically they would have not been here considering all the resources and time it would have needed to build these businesses zero to one see whenever a new market is blooming and many competitors are flocking for their share entering the market at the right time is as important as it is to get the product right you need to make sure that customers give you enough time and attention in order to make you a part of their lives especially when it comes to anything fitness or health related it's extremely difficult because the friction is just too much now on to the third and last point which is access to better tech and competence see cult wanted to be the best fitness platform and for that they of course needed the best tech and that's why acquisitions of companies like onyx was a smart move see onyx was one of the highest traded apps in the fitness space worldwide and this acquisition helped cure fit in improving their camera tracking and all the interface related parts of the app since they wanted to be really accurate when it comes to virtual sessions and fitness tracking which is something you can see on cult live for example this was super important for them in achieving speed and save them immense amounts of time that they had to spend otherwise if they had to develop everything in house in fact they even launched their digital services to the us market in 2021 because if you have the best tech in the world then why not sell it separately and narish krishnaswamy the growth and marketing head once said that the company aimed to get a 50% share of fitness across all formats this is primarily the reason why the company went on to acquire some of the best and leading companies in different verticals 
See, by acquiring these companies, cult founders skipped the time-consuming zero to one journeys that they would have had to undertake. It also allowed them to bring in a team of missionaries because acquiring companies means having dedicated founders join their teams and co-building with them rather than competing with them. This gave cult a team of amazing leaders who kept the entrepreneurial spirit running within the team and solved their problem of great talent because founders also bring in the A teams with them. Plus, it allowed them to borrow culture. See, if you think about it, Mukesh and Ankit came from backgrounds that make them great with operations, scaling, etc. But sports and fitness as a culture was really brought in by newly acquired founders. They borrowed culture from the acquired companies, which also helped them eliminate their weaknesses. Now, for the final bit, we wanted to cover if other companies can replicate this. See, of course, after going through this full strategy, you must have a question around how could cult do so many acquisitions and if you can do the same for your company or is it possible in your industry? Well, see, cult fit was unlike any other usual startup from the very start. They had an ex-Mintra founder who had already sold his last company for about 2000 crores and getting VCs to invest in his vision was a cakewalk for Mukesh because investors were more than willing to take bets on him. And as we know, in today's world, it's the founder who investors take a bet on rather than the business, which sure comes later in the early stages. And because of this, Cultfit raised 100 crores, which was about $15 million at the time from Clary Apple, Axel Ventures, IDG Ventures. And by the way, even before they had launched the first product in the market, this was one of the largest early rounds by an Indian startup that had happened at the time. And they wanted to raise further in subsequent years too as well, of course. So while this strategy has worked out really well for cult, this could be almost impossible for any bootstrap company to do. Cool. And now you know the secret to cult's massive expansion. I hope you really found some value in it. I'll see you in the next one.